Lynchings were acts of racial terrorism during the Jim Crow era. More than 4,000 African Americans were lynched in 20 states between 1877 and 1950. 592 people were lynched in Georgia, which ranked second only to the state of Mississippi. The resolution for the module is not as critical as the, uh, getting all the stuff done for the marker. The main thing we want is that the marker will honor the known, uh, list the names of the people we know, and the unknown victims of lynching. The names and dates of DeKalb's lynchings were made public as part of a new memorial in Montgomery dedicated to highlighting the impact of lynchings of African Americans. DeKalb leaders are planning a series of events dedicated to acknowledging the county's lynchings and atoning for that dark period of its history. Now, the NAACP and other community partners are raising money to finance its installation and other events collectively known as the Remembrance Project. DeKalb is believed to be just the second government entity in Georgia to acknowledge the lynchings that occurred within its borders. In addition to helping the county reckon with its past, markers highlighting the lynchings that occurred in DeKalb could also provide healing for the loved ones of those affected by these killings. But first, that history must be examined. After a black man was accused of assaulting a white woman, a mob in Redan, a rural community 16 miles east of Atlanta, wrestled him from the custody of deputies and hanged him from a tree. Years later, quarry workers chased two black men into the Lithonia woods, but the details of their deaths and their names were lost to history. In another case, a black jitney cab driver stopped to pick up a fare not knowing that riot would end with the Ku Klux Klan leaving him to die in Druid Hills. These three accounts are the known lynchings in DeKalb County, hidden in history and receiving little attention for many decades. This is what I had seen when I had come before, is the fact that there's something already here that would allow us to have the module sit here. That's the idea. That's a perfect spot for the module. Uh, you want to put it someplace near a bench or someplace where people can stop, read it, and reflect. Yeah. DeKalb County and some of its cities have joined a national movement to confront America's history of racism in a more honest and complete manner. The conversation began when 2015's deadly church shooting in Charleston, South Carolina, prompted new attention to monuments that promote ideals of white supremacy. In DeKalb, discussions about racial injustice increased after a woman was killed during a protest over Confederate monuments in Charlottesville, Virginia. In Decatur, DeKalb's county seat, a 30-foot tall monument towers over the town square. It is dedicated to Confederate soldiers of a covenant-keeping race. It is important for DeKalb and DeKalb's government to publicly acknowledge uh, the terrorism that occurred in our nation, particularly after the Civil War and through the early part of the uh, 20th century. County and city leaders have tried to move the monument from such a visible location, but state law limits their options. Uh, lynchings, many of them were state-sponsored or at least supported. Uh, when they occurred. And so it is important for us, uh, the current leadership of this county, and really the citizens of DeKalb County in the state of Georgia, to recognize the history of lynchings, uh, to create contact for lost cause monuments like the one that's behind me today, as well as the marker or the monument that is Stone Mountain. All of this is a part of our history. It is a low point in our history, but it is history. We should study it, we should learn from it. You can't hide it, you can't ignore it. It's a part of how we became to be. And let us hope that we learn from the mistakes of the past 
to create a more equitable present and future. These acts of racial terror were covered in antiseptic details in local newspapers, including the Atlanta Constitution, a predecessor to the Atlanta Journal Constitution. The articles are devoid of empathy for the victims, let alone any analysis of the white supremacy and terrorism that was often at the core of these acts. Here is an excerpt of an article about the lynching of Reuben Hudson, printed in the Atlanta Constitution on July 28, 1887. Kill him, hang him, cried a dozen. Shoot him, chimed in a half hundred. Burn him, yelled the entire crowd, now almost frantic. The mob began pushing up to the guards and the guards, powerless to resist the pressure, gave back first against one wall the mad humanity and then against another. The Negro stood with head bowed, never uttering a word. He heard the abuse heaped upon him and listened to the threats without moving a muscle. This did not please the crowd. The men wanted to see him suffer and some, more heartless than others, kicked and thumped him. The Negro paid no more attention to the licks than the words. He appeared to think that Bailiff Norton would protect him as far as possible and clung to his side as closely as he could. The crowd pushed nearer the prisoner until those on the outside of the throng could not see him. Cries to put him to death continued, but for a few seconds no demonstrations of an intention to carry out the threats were made. There was no one willing to make the break. Finally, a tall, stalwart young farmer elbowed his way through the throng to the prisoner and laying his hand on him said, Your time has come. The DeKalb County Commission approved a resolution authorizing a lynching marker and its placement on the grounds of the county courthouse in Decatur. Somebody suggested the courthouse. And I thought, oh, that's perfect because these people were denied justice. They were denied due process. They were just pulled out and strung up or stabbed, shot, killed, whatever. So by putting them close to the house of justice after death is the best way we can honor them. It is one of the busiest places in the county and a symbol that there is no hiding from the past. <laughs>